Again, thank you so much for still sticking with us. It's a Friday, all right, and we are heavy on social media. Hashtag Morning Attentive is where we can engage. And we are live on Facebook and your pages at NTV Uganda. And you'll find the morning at NTV Livestream right there. We're getting into something light but pertinent. Now, every morning, men and women wake up to head to put themselves up and make themselves up, yes, in preparation for different errands and work alike. But did you know that you need to be informed about the risks involved with regards to you putting makeup and how you actually do it and how you need to go about it so makeup works for you as a plus and not as a negative. So we'll be getting into that. But before we get into who is in studios and what those details are, we do have a package for you. Often, lipstick is the first cosmetic that any adolescent girl is allowed to wear, usually in form of sheer gloss. Eventually, it becomes part of many a woman's uniform to the point that they feel somehow incomplete if they do not wear it. In fact, lipstick is most likely to be the only type of makeup worn by women if there is no time to wear any other type of makeup. Lipstick has cast a spell over cultures through history, initially shunned, this has been finally embraced. <laughs> After hitting Kampala streets, NTV found out that at least 8 out of 10 women wear lipstick. Consequently, the lipstick business is flourishing in downtown Kampala. <laughs> Lipstick is also perceived as an important component in the daily grooming of women and considered by many to be a necessary addition to their faces. Because it makes me feel confident. Like who doesn't want to wear lipstick? I wear lipstick to look beautiful. I just don't feel like lipstick is appropriate because in most cases it makes some people depending on how you put it on, look ugly. Like any other thriving businesses, fake lipstick brands also feature on the market. So one thing I always felt whenever I did lipstick that my lips were getting a little bit dark. Fake lipstick feels heavy on the lips. You really feel that it's fake. There is a way it burns your lips when you're applying. The lipstick that I'm holding in my hands is called matte lipstick. It lasts for over 12 hours. Chucky says it's the most applied lipstick in her makeup studio. Lip gloss and lip balm are also widely used by women. The gloss is meant to give a glossy luster which has medical and soothing purposes on the lips. Honestly, gloss feels so nice. The is your lips feel like natural. Has it ever occurred to you and you wonder about the components that lipstick is made of and how far it can go to affect our lips? Some metals that are sometimes found inside the lipsticks that are probably labeled to be uh, carcinogenic. Uh, for example, things uh, to do with uh, lead or mercury that might be components. Once a patient or somebody is sensitized to this component, uh, they present with blisters and swelling of the lips, which might sometimes spread to other areas of the face and around the mouth. From a medical perspective, um, I recommend a lot of balm many times. According to Dr. Ogwang, there is no evidence that lipstick can result into cancer infection. Olivia Komgisha, NTV Tonight. Thank you so much, Olivia, for that particular report. I love my lipstick. I'm sure you've noticed that. But um, yes, I make sure that I do it the right way. And today we're not just going to focus on lipstick, but makeup entirely. And just getting to understand how to do it in the right and proper way and also the products to use. So you can be safe health-wise, all right? So in studios, I do have Beatrice Komhanji, a.k.a. Chalky. Mm -hmm. She is a makeup artist. She was also in that particular report. Welcome to Morning Attentive, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. So today, it's going to be a practical day because we also have our co-producer for the show. <laughs> She's going to be our model of the day, Miss Digna. And so uh, we're going to get straight into it, Chucky. 
okay. makeup. And nowadays, it's not just the ladies, but also the men put on makeup. Yeah, and I'll tell difference. you, even here in media especially, men powder up, yeah, some true. do foundation and stuff like that. I think before we get into lipstick, let's mm -hmm. just start with the face because I think it's the skin is the one that takes in a lot of makeup because it's, it's the biggest chunk of what people see. Yeah. So when it comes to the face, before you even put on makeup in mm -hmm. the morning, what should you do to prep it? Mm. First and foremost, you have to first wipe your face. And after wiping the face, you get like the moisturizer. You first apply it such that your skin doesn't get like the makeup directly. Mm. And after all that, you can do the foundation to avoid that direct contact. Right. So yeah. wiping your face, that is after maybe you've cleansed already, making sure that the pores yeah, are actually cleaning. clean. Yeah. So you can either use soap or a cleanser. What is appropriate for the face? You can use the cleanser. Oh, before before all that you can do like steaming mm -hmm. like the night before yeah. the night before yeah. just to prep the skin yeah. for the makeup yeah. so make sure that your skin is clean critical before you start off all right then because after that some, some some people have sensitive skins so if you put like makeup directly even though it's original yeah you can get like a problem with your skin okay yeah. then after that make sure you moisturize to create that barrier yeah. okay then we have digna here she's already cleansed her yeah, face, yeah. moisturized. Now we get it's into ready. the first step. Yeah. What should be done after that? I've moisturized, I've cleansed, I've moisturized. What you next? You go for your eyebrow. First? Yes. Okay. All do right. Eyebrows, do the eyebrows <laughs> first. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? Because like, well, a majority first set their faces after moisturizing. You put your foundation, you put your powder, and then you go to the eyebrows. Uh, why should you start with the eyebrows first? This is easier for me. Ah, okay. Yeah. So preference. Yeah, you it's prefer, okay. I prefer this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to grooming the eyebrows and just uh, making sure that the eyebrows are okay, mm. um, I'll give you different options that are now in the market. Mm. Of course, <laughs> you're the people who uh, are at the forefront of this. When it comes to grooming the, the eyebrows, there's um, others go for, you know, just tweezing. The others who you know just take off the overgrowth with razor blades mm. um the others who go for laser of the three which one is most appropriate and healthy and safe mm, yeah, i prefer the scissors sorry sorry the what there is a blade there is a blade yeah uh -huh. why is that like it's cheaper and it's easier it keeps time mm -hmm. yeah the, the the other one you've told me that i want for Laser. Yeah, for, for the laser, it's, it quite takes time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And it's expensive as and well. it's expensive as well. People can't really fit in. Right. Yeah. Okay. And th uh, there's also tweezing. There's al also tweezing. Um, chalky. There's also tweezing um, uh, with tweezing. Mm. I know it's more painful than razor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but what are the risks as well? Just the painful factor. Yeah. But for tweezing, and let's just put um, laser away because, you know, with laser it's expensive and also we have experts that do it. So mm -hmm. with regards to risks and, you know, the safeguards on that, it's already sorted out. But for razor and tweezing, where a majority of us find ourselves doing that for ourselves, what should you actually do to ensure that you're actually safe? Because, you know, a razor is sharp. But you be careful when you're using it. You should be what? You be careful when you're using you it. You need to be careful. Yeah. But should you maybe, I don't know, disinfect it or something? Yeah, you first disinfect it. Okay. Yeah. And make sure that it's just one razor per person. One <laughs> razor per person, of course, you can't. A client has to see opening a new razor blade, of course. That's critical. Okay. Yeah. So the eyebrows, uh -huh, they're yeah, coming almost through. Done. Almost done with the eyebrows. Yeah. Then after, I don't know, Digna, if you have a question in regards to eyebrows. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know why they, I don't want it so thick. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to outstand and someone looks at your face and the first thing they notice is the eyebrows. forehead. <laughs> because they're outstanding. Mm -hmm. So that's on preference. Yeah. I prefer them mild and to look like you've actually not done them. But still the mild one is the best. Yeah. Mm. The mild one is the best. Mm. Okay. So I, I think we've ex exhausted the matters to do with, you know, um, risks involved with that eyebrow bit. Um, the other bit that you always, you know, get issues with is the eye, the eye itself, um, where people put eyeshadow, you put eyeliner, you put mascara, mm -hmm. and this is the eye, you know. Mm -hmm. So when applying makeup on that area, what should you put into consideration to ensure that you don't mess up your eyes? The eye itself. Some people have sensitive eyes. Like so me. when you're de dealing with the eye, mm -hmm. 
you don't really have to be so hard on it. Actually, first ask the client, are, you, are, you, are your eyes okay? If are they sensitive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then if she doesn't want to maybe put mascara, you don't. Okay. Because eventually if you put mascara, then they might become teary and eventually spoil the, the, the whole look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's for mas But when applying mascara especially, because it goes to the eyelashes, and mm -hmm. eyelashes are totally close to, you know, the eye, because when you're blinking and stuff like that. So when it comes to making sure that mascara is actually safe and doesn't mess your eyes up, mm -hmm. um, what are the safety measures around there? I always get my pencil like this. Mm -hmm. So I lift her eye a bit, a little bit higher, mm -hmm. then I start applying, such ah. that it doesn't, like, go inside the eye. Okay. Magic. So the product should not touch the eyes. Yes. Okay, critical. Because when the eye becomes teary, the eye will become red, then ah, the makeup will look ugly. Yeah, yeah. Over and above mascara, there's something else that comes close to our eyes, and that's either um, eye pencil or mm. eyeliner. So what's the trick around there? Because especially with liquid eyeliners, it's so easy to get it, get into the eyes. Mm. So what should you do to ensure that there's no contact between the product and your eyes? I always use the pencil. I don't really use the liquid because the liquid is kind of tricky applying it and people when you're applying on the when you when you're working on the eye mm -hmm. someone cannot really give you the eye like directly so she'll keep on blinking 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 oh yeah <laughs> and you cannot really use the liquid because yeah. it might get in contact with the eye inside so whether you're doing the makeup yourself or whether you're having a makeup artist you know work on you you need to make sure that the product does not get to the eye that's the basic rule yes Okay. Because when it gets into the eye, the eye will become red and she will look she won't look nice. And it's easy to get infections. Yeah. Ah, okay, all right. The other thing is still sticking to the eyes. Um, and nowadays people put uh, the fake add-ons, the lashes. <laughs> now there's the strip eyelash and there's those ones that are eh, inbuilt somehow and they stay mm. with you for more than a month. Mm. Um, what are the risk factors around there? I think you can start with the strip lash. Uh, to avoid the risks, eh, you have to be careful. You have to be careful when you're applying. Because me, I have, I have the, the, eye, the eye bond. Yes. It's the one I use for applying the one, the, the strip one. But of course, you have to be extra careful because it's the eye. Mm. Yes. Because any mistake, the bond will enter the eyes. And what is the risk good. factor to that? When they, there's contact between the bond and... Of course, you will get a problem with the eye. And you know in the market especially, and I'll ask you this because especially with the bond, we've seen this in the internet mm -hmm. um, with our friends at times where the bond actually irritated the skin and they either uh, you know, developed a rash or some complication around the skin, mm -hmm. not even the eye, the skin, the eyelid. Um, so with regards to you know, just making sure that you get the right legit bond, what should you look out for? Because the the strip is okay, whether fake or real, that wouldn't affect you because it's, it's solid. But the bond, it's blue. How should you go about identifying a legit bond? Some people make a mistake of using the hair bond instead of the eye bond. That is where they go wrong. So me, when, I'm looking up, when I'm looking for the best bond, I, I, I look out for the eye bond, not mm -hmm. the hair bond. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not the hair bond. Okay. It is the worst you can use on someone's eye. Yeah. And yet other people use it. All right. Okay. Interesting. And how about the inbuilt lashes? What's the risk factor to that? <laughs> because I'm sure they, I, well, I've never tried it, but I, I hear they put eh, like strand by one. strand yes. and they use what? glue. What's the, <laughs> they really what's the look risk nice. factor to they that? They really yeah. look nice. Mm -hmm. They look nice, but what's the risk associated with that? Of course, it's the same problem. You have to be careful when you're applying anything concerning the eye. Yeah. You have to be careful. But come on, Chucky, with the strip, mm. I, I have put the strip before, and I know that it goes on top of your normal lashes. Yes. So the risk factor is minimized. But with a strand, they put it like, they try to align it with your normal lashes. Yes. So you separate the lash, then you put the eye. And make sure that you don't touch the eye. Yes. You can do it because there are some tweezers we use, mm -hmm. but you have to be careful. How Super careful. is someone supposed to wash their face? You, you wipe your face, you use wipes. Wow. Okay. And when you, okay, because the other thing is, I think we can stick to that, uh, especially the single strand kind of lashes fixing, mm -hmm. um, because that is where a majority of women go to, uh, the option they actually take, because it's long lasting, less stress, and you look like, yeah, 
it's very it's cute. It's expensive. Yeah, it's expensive, but you look cute 24-7. <laughs> um, she asked a very critical question, Digna. Mm -hmm maintaining the cleanliness there. If it's the you know permanent ones and you have to put on mascara, how do you go about removing them? Because the majority will tell you I struggle removing they struggle with the eyes. they struggle with cleaning the you know the lashes because of the mascara involved and also they don't want to over thoroughly clean it because, because then the strands will come out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so how do you go about cleaning the fake inbuilt lashes? You you first get wipes, then you you clean the eye area. Wipes, pure wipes. Yes, okay. pure wipes. Uh -huh. And after maybe when you're using water, you use like, you be careful when you're washing the eyes, the, the eye part of it. Mm -hmm. So make sure you just use wipes, be careful, be gentle. Uh, be gentle. <laughs> so wipes <laughs> alone can take off the mascara? Yes. Wipes alone? Yes, wipes alone. Okay. All right. Digna, have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So over and above the eyes. Mm -hmm. Now we can go to the lips. The lips. Now we do have quite a number of brands with regards to lipstick, lip gloss, lip wear, quite a number, even lip liners. Mm. Um, but a majority of ladies will tell you that um, when I apply this stuff, any lip, any, any type of lip makeup, especially the matte type, my lips crack, they feel dry, at times they even break. What is the safety tip with regards to using that range of product, lip care? Yeah, it's true some, some lipsticks bring the cracks on the lips. <coughs> so when you realize you have such a problem, you first use Vaseline. You apply Vaseline, then after you wipe it gently, and after you apply the matte lipstick. Okay. Yeah. So the, 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 the need to do that is to moisturize your lips first? Yes, first moisturize your lips. Okay. Yeah. All right. So after you moisturize your lips and, well... You've applied the makeup. Um, is there any other thing that you need to take into consideration with regards to just ensuring that your lips are okay? Yeah, the, the, the other thing is that if you realize that matte lipstick is not good for you, you just leave it. Use gloss. You use gloss. You just leave it because eventually you'll get dark lips and you won't like it. Dark lips? Yeah. Okay, so the dark lips come because of the extra dry effect that you get from the matte lipstick? Yeah, the extra dryness then the fake part of it because... Some matte lipsticks are fake. Tell us more about that. How do we get to identify a fake and a legit product, <laughs> especially with lipsticks? In that particular report, um, there's a wide range, and everyone is selling mm. this product. So how mm. do I go about distinguishing this one is legit, this one but is you can counterfeit? Also, no, how can you go for a 5K lipstick? But like Chucky, that is obvious, you and fake. I know, you and I know, even in the up streets, in this mm. particular malls, there are stores that sell fake at expensive prices. So how do you go about just identifying? Are there telltale signs? Yeah. You can really see. So when you get a lipstick like this one, now this is Noba. Mm -hmm. This is a ring. When you open like this, mm -hmm. the fake one, eh? mm -hmm. fake ones have like that funny smell. Eh? And when you open it like this, you really see some, some, some cracks and when you're applying still you can really feel it because the result it becomes so 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 dry on your lips mm. of which you cannot even finish Talk. the whole day. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, so some of those especially smell. Yeah, For a smell, beginner, start with the smell. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Out. So okay. Let's assume that we're done and no, hey, I you. love your eyebrows. Thank you. <laughs> So um, let's assume that the day is gone, uh, just as you continue to make her up, let's assume that the day is gone. Um, many of us go to sleep in our makeup. That is very dangerous. Why? How can you sleep with makeup? And the next skin you wake up with, a, 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 the, the next day you wake up with a, with a spoiled skin and you start complaining? So what is the, you know, um, what is the explanation behind the reason as to why we should not sleep with makeup? What does it do to our skin? It spoils the skin. You get pimples, you get rash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to wash off the makeup every night, every night. You cannot sleep with makeup. Okay. So what's that the process of taking off? That is also off? a sign of being that... <laughs> Yes. And lazy at the same time. Yeah. All right. So as we uh, as we get into that factor that you're saying that hey you should not sleep with makeup, how do we go about taking off the makeup? Because others will tell you, I just pop into the shower mm -hmm. and I shower. And others will tell you, no, the professional way to do it is you can first you know just take it off first and have a you know okay face, then go to the shower. What's the process of taking off makeup? Mm. 
if you have like make a makeup wipes first use those ones then maybe maybe enter the showers mm -hmm. and wash the face with the bathing bathing what ba bathing soap mm -hmm. yeah okay so first take off your makeup with wipes with wipes but I'll then tell wash you this. the face yeah but I'll tell you this over and above that we know that there are other people who have sensitive skin mm. and I'm sure that you have clients who will tell you that using wipes alone actually irritates yeah there my are some skin. fake wipes true yeah so mm. what can it can you do anything to make sure that before you use the wipe that maybe the skin is you prepped can, for taking off makeup? use water. Okay. You just go to the bathroom and use soap and water and w wash it off. So you can actually directly just use soap and water? Yes. Okay. And is it okay? Others will tell you that, hey, I use um, oil to first, you know, take off the heavy makeup to lighten or loosen the makeup. Then I use wipes on top of that. Is that an advantage? Is that a yeah, plus? People have different skin types. So if that one works for someone, it is okay to use the oil. Mm. Yeah. So you can first use the oil, loosen the makeup, mm -hmm. then use wipes to take off, then go to the shower. Yeah. Especially with eye makeup, because others will tell you that when I use wipes alone, this mascara thing doesn't come off easily. You know, the eyeliner doesn't come off easily, the eyeshadow as well. So it's good that you say that you can first use any type of oil, loosen the makeup, mm -hmm. then use wipes, then go to the shower. Yes. All right. Digna. Yeah. Have you heard? Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing is skin care uh, with regards to people who have sensitive skin. How mm. do you go about dealing with pimples, uh, that time of the month when you have breakouts? How do you go about making sure that your skin is okay, just being nice to your skin? I have skincare products at my workplace. Mm -hmm. So if I get such a, a case, I just advise you to use a skincare product. Okay. Yes. So there's a routine to it? Yes. Okay. For people who have, you know, pimples, breakouts and stuff like that. Yeah. But Chalky, if you have a client who's telling you, I have breakouts not because of me not eating well, not eating a balanced diet, but because of my hormones. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with such a person? Because, you know, skincare products don't, don't, don't necessarily work for hormonal Isn't issues. I advise you to first go to a skin doctor. Okay, a dermatologist. Yeah. Before we go on for the skin products, first advise you to go for the... For the checkup of the skin, right? Yes. Then it first we will rule really know what is really hurting the skin. Correct. Yeah. So you need to make sure that you learn your skin. Yes. As we wrap this up, we've uh, um, agreed that p different people have different skin types. Mm -hmm. um, we've agreed that um, that will also determine the type of makeup you use and how you go about applying the makeup. Because there are people who will tell you, "I can't use foundation because my skin is." completely oily. Mm. So for people who have oily skin, um, and this is something that is critical to the ladies, how do you go about touching up during the day? How do you do it in the safest and proper way, touching up during the day because your skin so is oily? People with the oily skin, I always have the, the spray, the matte finish spray. Ah. Yeah. Then I also have the oil blocking. I have that powder that is that has the oil blocking part of it. It's yeah. the one I use for the people with the oily skin. Okay. Yeah. So in between the day when you feel like, uh, I need to freshen up you can use the spray or the powder yes the powder okay but it's it's different from this normal powder mm -hmm. the other one has oil blocking ah that component in it yeah okay lastly chalky making sure that your applicators are clean how do we go about cleaning these brushes the sponges these applicators cleaning 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 and how often should we clean it depends on how busy you've been. If you've been busy, like, let me take an example of, to, of today. I've been so busy, I have to wash the brushes. Yeah. The brushes have no time. Maybe I have to take, like, a week for washing. No. It depends on how busy you've been. If you've been busy, like, today, you have to wash the brushes, like, in the evening. Mm -hmm. yes. So every day? Not really every day. It depends on how busy you've been. If the brushes have overworked, of course, you have to wash them. Okay, and yeah. especially for makeup applicators, makeup artists like you, who mm. work on you know quite a number of clients in one day, um, how do you go about ensuring that you don't transfer um, an infection from client one to client B um, because of the applicators? Do you disinfect in between? What happens, and what should makeup artists get to know this morning? But still, you have to be having like many brushes. If you've worked on a client and you've real seen she has a bad skin. Why would you use the same brush on the next client? Change it. We change it. Okay, all right. Okay, Chucky, thank you so much for coming through. Um, mm -hmm. uh, 
Digna here is looking amazing. I really love the eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, we're going nice. to take a short commercial break and they're going to wind up and finish up with her lips and I think with the eyes, some, some, some mascara, some eyeliner, yeah, Digna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, Chucky, last remarks. Um, camera one is yours. Mm -hmm. I just want you to speak to makeup <coughs> artists and just everyone who loves makeup um, mm -hmm. in a nutshell. What is that basic thing they need to always remember once they're ready to put on their makeup or take off their makeup? Critical basic standards. Okay. Camera one. Well, once again, I'm called Kom Hanji Beatrice, the CEO Chalk is Ultimate Glamour. So the, the last thing I would tell the makeup artist is to always be clean when you're working on your clients. Cleanliness. Yeah, cleanliness. And that's not just for the makeup artists. But for everyone. Yeah, everyone. The client. Cleanliness is everything. Cleanliness is the key. All right. Thank you so much, Chucky, for coming through. Digna, thank you for being thank our guinea pig today. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep your views coming. Hashtag morning at NTV. I hope you've learned a thing or two, especially if you love makeup like I do. And nowadays, even men put on makeup. So this is information that is critical for both sexes. All right. We're taking a short commercial break, but morning at NTV does continue. Stay with us.